Humans are creatures of habits. You can't get rid of your bad habits. All you can do is change them to better habits. Habits that would improve your life or at least wouldn't harm you. The process of developing habits takes a lot of time. But today, we're going to do something different. We're going to focus on small habits that you can easily adapt right now. They're not going to take you a lot of time, but yet they are very effective. The moment I started implementing these habits, financially, I started doing better. That's why I'm going to share with you 12 mini money habits that you should start doing right now. So let's start with the first one. Don't use cash. I might get criticized for saying something like this, but hear me out. The greatest financial habit you can ever develop is tracking your expenses. Because when you know how much exactly you're spending, it's much easier to change your behavior. If you're spending too much and moving around, next time you will be more careful before taking another unnecessary ride. And the easiest way to track your expenses is to pay with a credit card or a debit card. Every transaction is recorded on your phone and you can revisit your transactions every day to see if you're not overspending. Which brings me to point number two. Spend 5 to 10 minutes every night to audit your spendings. An hour or two before going to bed, just pick up your phone, open your app that tracks your expenses and take a look at how much you're spending. Just audit your expenses for that day. You might realize that you have overspent on food for example. That will push you to be more careful next time when ordering another meal. Or maybe you have spent too much on Uber and you have to minimize your expenses for the next few days so that you don't get into a credit card debt at the end of the month. People usually act when it's too late, when they have already run out of money, so they are forced to get into debt. But then they repeat the same mistake over and over until they find themselves buried in a lot of debt that they cannot get out. Number 3. Set a budget for everything. What most people do. They work hard, save money, they might even save for 6 months worth of expenses. Fantastic! But then they go on a vacation. And while they are on a vacation, they want to enjoy. They realize that they have all that money that they don't need urgently. Why not spend some of it? I mean, you will get back to work in a week or two and feel it again, right? But you won't. So to avoid overspending or withdrawing from your savings account, always set a strict budget and never leave it no matter what. This is how much you have set for a vacation. That's it. That's your budget. This is how much you have set for outside dining. You can't spend more than that. You will have to wait till next week. Number 4. Automate your investments. If you're not into investing, I mean, if your job isn't directly related to the stock market or real estate, you probably don't have the time to analyze companies, look for real estate deals, or follow up the financial news. That's why you watch people like me who try to summarize everything in short animated videos. But here is a life hack. You can't always look for the next opportunity and you don't simply want to keep your savings in cash because you might end up spending them. So choose a few stocks or maybe one or two index funds and dollar cost average. Which means every week or month just invest in that stock without analyzing a new company every single time. I get it. You don't want to be buying at the top but you don't know where that top is. So just invest every week. You will hit the top and the bottom. So you will dollar cost average at the end of the day. And you aren't going to waste your time looking for opportunities, which means you will finally start investing instead of just watching how others are doing that. Number five, negotiate whenever you can. You can't negotiate when you are in Walmart, for example, since prices are fixed and if you don't like it, no one is pushing you to buy anything from there. However, there are plenty of stores where there is a room for negotiation. Whatever you are buying, if it's possible to negotiate, always do it. Whether you're in a job interview trying to get a higher salary or buying a house, you might put yourself in an uncomfortable position, but imagine for a moment if you get a slightly better deal. If you get a 5 or 10% raise, that extra 5 or 10% means now you can save much more money. And if you count the opportunity cost, which means how much that extra 5 to 10% is going to worth in the long run, then you just saved yourself a fortune. Especially if you're buying a house. 
whenever you buy something really expensive like a house that costs a million dollars for example 20 or 30 or even 50 thousand dollars do not seem like a lot in comparison but if you drive the price down by thirty thousand dollars for example that's equivalent to someone just handing you thirty thousand dollars you just saved yourself a few months of work number six always check the lower shelves Hypermarkets or stores in general have long ago analyzed your height and carefully placed the most expensive items at your eye level, so that you come across them first. If you take a look at the lower levels, prices are a bit cheaper because that's where they place the most affordable items, since they know that most people aren't going to look at them. But you can outsmart them by taking a moment and checking what's down there. Usually the products aren't much different from the ones on the top. Eye level shelves at stores usually cost fortunes and the companies who are willing to pay that much usually include the cost and the price of that product. So you're basically paying for not looking down. Number 7. Don't brag about how much money you make or have. People have the tendency to expect more from people who make more money. If you get them a little small present on their birthday, they won't like you. But if they think that you're not rich and you barely make ends meet, then they will be happy that you even got them a small little gift. I know that it sounds horrible, but that's how humans are. You're rich, people expect more from you. It's like when a billionaire donates $100 million, people still criticize him saying that it's peanuts for him, he should have done more. He makes much more than that. Well, who cares how much he makes? He donated more money than you will ever be able to do, even if it's a tiny fraction of his wealth. Number 8. Surround yourself with like-minded people. It's very difficult to live frugally, trying to get financially free as soon as possible when your friends enjoy expensive meals, expensive vacations, and $5 coffees. Sometimes you even wonder whether it's worth saving all that money. So in order to keep yourself motivated, surround yourself with people with similar goals. Join the fire movement on Reddit, join the chat rooms, share with each other different tools and techniques that you use to save money. It really helps to know that you're not alone in this journey. You're not the only one who's struggling now to be financially free later. In the process, you're going to learn so much that you will cut your journey by a milestone. Number 9. Avoid cheap shoes. This might sound a bit controversial because we talk about saving money and being frugal and yet here I am telling you to never buy another pair of cheap shoes or in fact clothes. But what does cheap or expensive mean? If you buy a pair of cheap shoes that are going to last you a few months or two, then I call that expensive. That was a waste of money. But if you spend slightly more and these shoes will last you a few years for example, that's what I call the ultimate way to save money. Whenever you buy clothes or shoes, ask yourself, how long will this pair of shoes or this shirt is going to last me? I would buy sneakers that I can wear for the next 5 years rather than buy a new pair of shoes every single year. Number 10. Avoid your local grocery store. I get it. It's comfortable to get your groceries from the corner shop beside your house. You don't have to walk anywhere far. It's convenient and you pass through the store every single day anyway. But groceries are slightly more expensive there than in hypermarkets. That might not seem a lot, but over time they add up and turn into a decent amount of money. So here's what I like to do. I buy bulk. Go to the nearest hypermarket and buy the stuff you need for the next month or so. If you turn it into a habit, you're going to save a fortune in the long run. Number 11. Cut back on sweets. The worst habit you can ever develop is eating a lot of sweets. Don't get me wrong, I like sweets too, but most sweets are made out of pure harmful ingredients. They're expensive and they damage your health. It's okay to have some time to time, but try to cut them as much as you can. You have no idea how much you're going to save if you cut back on sweets. And most importantly, you're going to save a fortune on medical bills as well. And finally, think twice before paying. This is one of the best habits I have ever developed. I used to waste a lot of money like some of you, and then a few minutes or hours later, I would ask myself, why on earth did I buy that? I don't need it. I just wasted money. 
It happens to all of us, so I promise myself to think for a minute before paying for something, even if it's something I wanted to buy for a long time. I ask myself, do I really need that or I just want to spend some money? And the answer is quite often the latter. Try it, but do not be biased. Try to think about it independently. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.